Uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you to Dr. Apisamai uh, for the Ta Thai uh, edition of the uh, briefing, as always. So um, today is Sunday, the 24th of January, 2021, and I'll recap the uh, Thai language version as well as provide some additional information uh, regarding the current situation uh, here at the Center for COVID Situation Administration, as, as always. Um, so firstly, uh, Dr. Apisamai, uh, ended with a, uh, a chart uh, regarding three circles, as you saw on screen. The red first circle, the second uh, cluster, which is yellow, and the third circle or cluster, which is uh, green. So actually, um, uh, we in the English version, we showed this uh, yesterday uh, once already. But just to recap again, that uh, these are the three types of uh, the, the, the three types of circles that we might have in a particular case. So the case in point uh, yesterday when we reported was on the case uh, that affected the CCSA. So the red circle is of course the uh, first uh, circle, the, yes you see on screen there right now, uh, the, the circle which is closest to the person uh, affected uh, or positive, found to be positive. The second circle, the secondary cluster in yellow, that's where we in the CCSA were, and the third cluster is a green cluster, the, the, third, the third tier, uh, so, so to speak. So of course the measures uh, vary according to uh, each cluster. The last cluster in green, uh, no, no need for any uh, actions, uh, the second cluster, which is the yellow, uh, is to uh, is to monitor uh, actually the uh, symptoms. If there are any any symptoms that 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 might uh, come during the uh, coming days, uh, also to wear masks and uh, abide by the various measures. The the first red cluster, of course, that's the cluster that's uh, the uh, most um, worrisome. Uh, and of course, all of those people in the first cluster have to be tested uh, for, for COVID. So that's what uh, Dr. Apisamai uh, ended with. Um, I'll also touch on uh, one uh, issue just to let you know that, of course, in Thailand, um, in general, we try to uh, close the generation gap. And it's very important to hear from our younger uh, generation. So, for example, sometimes we have uh, from time to time uh, certain dialogues with people of the younger generation, students and university students, to hear what they think about the COVID situation on what we can do to improve uh, our lives and just on a personal note just uh, that uh, this afternoon I'll have one of those uh, many uh, dialogues with uh, younger younger people on, uh, on on video conference to learn about their thoughts about uh, COVID yeah, in Thailand in, in particular. So I'd like to start off today with an important uh, piece of information uh, from uh, immigration uh, that According to ministerial regulation of uh, dated 25th of December 2020, which is in effect on the 25th of uh, January, uh, one month after, which is this coming week, um, all persons entering the kingdom uh, must be COVID free. So as you see on screen, uh, there's an infographic from the immigration department there. Uh, basically, uh, it says that the new arrivals uh, from abroad would require uh, for the passengers to hold the certificate of uh, entry uh, certificates issued by the Thai embassies abroad. And the criteria according to this regulation is that uh, new entries have to be uh, COVID free and free from other diseases as you see on, on, on screen on the left uh, box. So since that is the requirement, uh, when passengers arrive and they have to go through the COE uh, uh, certificate uh, process, uh, receiving that from the respective embassies abroad, therefore the criteria uh, that is required in this regulation is fulfilled uh, already uh, in the COE because the COE requires a, a COVID-free certificate for new new arrivals. So, so the COE going through the COE process will. Uh, enable the person to be able to fulfill this uh, ministerial regulation um, already. Now for those um, already in the kingdom and who are renewing work permits, uh, the COVID free is not required uh, to present, uh, to be presented upon renewing the work uh, permit. Uh, so, so that's uh, about the uh, immigration uh, regulation that is being enforced, that will be, be enforced uh, starting uh, next week. The General situation, moving on to that, uh, we have uh, slides coming up for you. Today, we have 
2,860 uh, active cases. Um, those in Thailand who are still uh, being treated in the 2000s. Uh, all in all, since last year, over 13,000 cases and over 10,000 recoveries. So the numbers, we're, we're getting there. I think we're getting there. The numbers are closing in uh, with uh, around less than 3,000 for a couple of uh, days or, or weeks now. We hope that the number will be lowered in due course. Uh, today, the new confirmed cases we recorded is 198. Of this number, 118 from local transmission, 73 from active case finding, uh, six cases uh, from within the state quarantine system, and one case found uh, at the immigration uh, checkpoint. The number of new recoveries we have for today is 119, which is added already in the cumulative number of recoveries, over 10,000 that you see uh, on screen now. Unfortunately, we have one new fatality to report, making the accumulated total of fatalities at 73. Uh, this case, the 73rd case, is a Thai woman uh, that is uh, 73 years old uh, with underlying uh, illnesses uh, and from Samut Sakhon province. Um, it came within the context of uh, COVID positive, uh, meeting a COVID positive uh, person. So our sincere condolences uh, to the family of the fatality. The briefing by Dr. Pisamai, um, we showed some uh, graphs and charts and maps as, as usual. So I'll just recap some observations uh, in that regard. Uh, firstly is that Thailand now ranks, uh, it, sort of in the same ranking as we had in the couple of uh, weeks past, ranks 126 uh, globally in the world right now. Uh, most of the infections in Thailand uh, have been found in Samut Sakhon province. Um, up to 148, and in Bangkok, uh, two cases. Uh, this is for today. The infections in terms of uh, week on week, uh, week, week by week, uh, is, is lowering. As you see, as you saw on the um, maps that were shown by Dr. Apisamai, there were a couple of maps there, and on the third map, that's particularly uh, regarding this week, the map of Thailand has actually started to become colored uh, white, whiter uh, than, than the other uh, weeks, meaning that this week, compared to other weeks, there has been less uh, spread, uh, less concentration in various provinces. So, for example, three weeks ago, there might have been a lot of yellow provinces, meaning that it spread, uh, uh, particularly for that week, it spread to many provinces. But for, for this week, it has been concentrated on only a few provinces, fewer provinces. So most provinces are white colored in that map for, for this week. The accumulated uh, number of provinces that have been affected since the beginning uh, still remains, however, however at uh, 63 uh, provinces. The active case finding in uh, Samut Sakhon continues and are still carried out uh, intensively, found over a lot of infections uh, in, in, in the area, and many have also been tested. Uh, over 10,000 test testings, active case finding per day, and this is growing according to the plan, is expanding. Uh, so that we, it's, it, it can become easier to control the, the spread. Uh, we also mentioned about the factory quarantine. Um, the factory quarantine, in particular, the uh, deputy governor of uh, some provinces were here at the CCSA uh, daily uh, meeting this morning, and they reported about their readiness, uh, their readiness in terms of uh, isolating uh, people who are infected in these factory quarantines for workers to help prevent the, the spread. So that's uh, one good um, update that we have about the 100% uh, readiness in terms of the factory quarantines, which in fact are, of course, the source of the, the major concentration of, of the new wave, uh, so, so to speak. Uh, with the more intensive measures that we are carrying out uh, leading to the end of uh, this month, January, it will lead to um, more uh, relaxation, uh, more uh, relaxed uh, preventive me measures, ho hopefully, which hopefully will also include the uh, schools uh, as well, opening up, reopening up of, of schools. So the week uh, next, the week of the 25th to the 31st of January, uh, it will be the week that we will be carrying out the highest level of prevention measures 
to pave the way for possible nationwide uh, relaxation of, of measures. Of course, pending that we carry out these measures to the maximum efficiency and receive uh, the full cooperation of the general public. So just some additional information uh, that is useful for, to the English language audience. Uh, in line with what I just mentioned about more provinces, more the possibility of more relaxation, that more provinces uh, are set to ease uh, lockdown measures as the number of infections have become more stable. Several provinces decided uh, have been deciding to move uh, forward in relaxing certain lockdown uh, measures. One of these provinces is uh, Phuket province, where no new cases in Phuket have been reported for 29 days straight. It's very glad to hear because in last year, Phuket was a case in point. But for this new wave, uh, Phuket will no longer require travelers from other provinces to scan ID cards before entering the province. And visitors from highly controlled red zone provinces will no longer need to quarantine themselves, self-quarantine for 14 days when arriving. However, people traveling from uh, highly controlled red zone provinces will still need to undergo temperature checks uh, and pre-register their arrival in Phuket at the website www.gophuket.com and go Phuket, this is spelled uh, G-O dot P-H-U-G-E-T, it's not K, gophuket.com, this is the uh, uh, website for, for pre-registration for Phuket and you have the infographic there. Uh, uh, up, on, up, on, up on screen. So in the meantime, travelers uh, from the uh, highly controlled or the uh, dark red zone provinces are still required to undergo quarantine for 14 days when arriving uh, in, in the province. Uh, meanwhile, Ayutthaya province uh, will start reopening health establishments, uh, spas, and uh, massage parlors uh, if these businesses are uh, able to strictly comply with the control measures. For Nakhon Rajasima uh, province, yes, you had an infographic on uh, Ayutthaya province there on screen now. For, for Nakhon Rajasima province, they've also announced that travelers from the control zones or the orange uh, zone areas will not be required to undergo self-quarantine. Uh, travelers from highly controlled provinces or red zone who plan to stay overnight will have to report to the provincial health uh, officials and observe strict control measures and report uh, to a health officer or disease control officer, officer within 12 hours if they are planning to stay more than 14 days in the province. Um, so uh, then, then again, uh, please check with the provincial uh, measures for each particular province that you are, are traveling uh, to. For Nakhon Rajasima, they further inform that any gathering of uh, fewer than 300 people is required to be uh, reported to the district uh, public health uh, office, while large gatherings of 300 people has to be approved by the provincial uh, communicable disease committee. Moving on to an important information uh, in terms of the, uh, excuse me, in terms of the uh, private sector, the business sector, um, guidelines for food delivery businesses to prevent the spread of COVID. So during this situation, uh, food delivery seems to have been one of the most uh, useful services. Uh, I've ordered it. Our friends have ordered it. Of course, it will keep us. Uh, happy because we are able to, of course, dine and consume the food that we usually uh, will like without having to go to the uh, restaurant itself. So since the delivery workers are among the most exposed uh, to the virus and they move around the city all the time, they meet many people all the time, the health ministry has announced the, a set of guidelines for food delivery uh, staff to prevent the spread. The list uh, you can see on screen there in an easy to uh, understand uh, infographic. Uh, courtesy of the Public Relations Department. It includes uh, the uh, close observation of uh, the uh, information, the preventive measures, the maintain at least one meter physical distance from customers, avoid leaving food on the ground. And for customers, it's suggested that everyone should uh, wash hands immediately after receiving food delivery. And uh, if possible, pay for the food delivery using e-payment or prepare an exact amount of cash to avoid any unnecessary contact. 
information on the different types of uh, COVID tests, uh, it's safe to say that all of us have been informed uh, from time to time about how one can carry out uh, preventive measures against COVID. And pretty sure that by now you all know uh, DMHTT by heart now. However, um, on COVID testing method methods like PCR, that's not been talked about so much. So today, just uh, briefly on that, the uh, PCR test, a method widely used in many countries, including Thailand, used to detect RNA, which is the genetic material of uh, COVID. That is why the doctors have to take a, a swab uh, test at the back of the nasal cavity uh, from through your uh, nostrils, uh, which is quite uh, an unpleasant uh, experience, if, if you ask me, because, of course, Recently, just two days ago, we here had to undergo that uh, test uh, ourselves. And even though the swabbing process is uh, quite uncomfortable, the PCR test is uh, one of the most accurate methods we have to, to detect uh, COVID infections. And currently, there are about 250 uh, specialized labs in Thailand accredited to do the PCR testing and at least uh, one lab located in every province. For more information on COVID and on the general picture of PCR, you can check also the uh, social media and Twitter account of the World Health Organization uh, or, the we or their website, uh, worldwideweb.who.int slash Thailand. So before ending, uh, just some uh, closing thoughts. That uh, with the active case, uh, active case finding missions being carried out every day in, in Thailand, in Samut Sakon and in other areas, the number of infections might uh, fluctuate up and down because we're finding uh, cases. We're finding cases from our active case finding. And we'll continue to do so, and it will, it will continue to uh, go up and down as long as our health officials, uh, so to speak, go into the deep end of of the pool to try to search and care and root out uh, those who are infected in in different communities and to carry out the tests on the public to find as many as many infected persons uh, as possible to best control COVID in, in Thailand. So on behalf of the CCSA and everyone uh, uh, here, both Thais and our friends of, uh, of Thailand, just once again to express our thanks and gratitude uh, to the frontline health personnel doing the active case finding all the doctors and nurses, as well as everyone involved in the process, in the risking themselves to keep all of us uh, safe from the pandemic. So it's uh, Sunday today. Um, we, of course, love working on Sundays if it's of public importance, if it's of use to you. I hope all of us uh, is all, all of us have been providing uh, good information to, to you, and you've benefited from that. You've benefited benefit from that. So, of course, next week uh, we hope for a healthy week next week. And I leave you with a quote uh, today from the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres: "We are in this together, and we will get through this together." So thank you very much for your kind attention today. Have a great, great and restful uh, weekend and more power to working next week. And we'll see you again tomorrow on Monday. Thank you very much. Sorry,